Libby Mitchell is the Democratic nominee for the Blaine House. Mitchell, a lawyer and former teacher, is currently president of the Maine Senate and former speaker of the Maine House. Libby, welcome back to Maine Watch. Thank you so much. Why do you want to be governor? Best question of the day. I believe that I have the best plan for moving Maine forward. It's been a tough time for Mainers. This national recession has hurt us as well as working people all over the country. I have a good plan for education. I have the ability to bring people together to get the job done. And I would like to, uh, I love the state of Maine. My adult kids have come back here to live and work. My grandchildren are here. I want that same opportunity for everyone. You know, we've seen um, the frustration from many voters. The Tea Party movement in some ways defines it, but I think a lot of people are frustrated with the status quo and want to overhaul government. Do you believe state government needs to be overhauled, or do you believe we need more incremental changes? What is your philosophy, sort of your broad philosophy, on where we need to be going forward? Every single time I've held myself out to the voters to run for the Senate or the State House, I've wanted, I've run on change. I want to make a difference, whether it's changing the educational system, making sure more people get to go to college, but I also think we do need to streamline government even more. As a legislator, you deal with pieces of legislation. As the governor, you can have a strategic vision. I want to change how we deal with economic development, to merge some departments, for example, economic development and uh, state planning and the Office of Energy, bring them right into the governor's office. That's something a governor can do, streamlining government and making sure that its focus is where we ought to be jobs for the next four years. Okay. Among your proposals during this campaign are a plan to um, provide pre-K for all yes. Maine four-year-olds um, and also to weatherize all Maine schools. Just guessing, I don't think anybody thinks those are bad ideas, but we are in a really tough economic situation. Absolutely. How do we pay for well, things that expensive? First of all, it's an investment. It saves money. Uh, everybody knows that kids learn from an early age, and if you miss that opportunity, you're going to have big cost in the future. I want to renegotiate the state liquor contract. I want to use those proceeds not only to help people go to college, but I also want to help expand pre-K. Some kids have it if they're lucky enough to be born in a town with it. Why shouldn't all Maine children have access to that? In terms of weatherization, do you know what? That doesn't cost the state any money. We are it could guarantee loans to the schools they would pay the loans back with the savings on their energy bill. So then the money could go into the classroom. We have to think outside the box. We have to be creative. It isn't just about taxes. It's about doing things differently. Um, what do you believe the state's role is in the state government's role in creating new jobs? And how will you create new jobs in Maine? Uh, the state's role, I think, is being a, pro a partner. For example, my experience in government, the best things that happen are public-private. I was director of Maine State Housing Finance Agency. This uh, first-time homebuyer program was delivered with realtors and bankers. The government didn't do it all, but we were partners. Pine tree zones, for example, these tax credits uh, for businesses opening and expanding, that's a partnership role. Uh, Maine is often the but-for piece, the education of the skilled workforce. Uh, businesses need that. So I just see the government really as a partner for the entrepreneurs. We want to create a culture of entrepreneurs to create the new jobs. Um, at least two of your um, opponents in this race have called for a limit to temporary wealth, TANF benefits, temporary welfare benefits to five years. Do you think that's a good idea to put a cap on welfare benefits? We actually already have that, except for waivers in cases of hardship. The most people who are on uh, temporary assistance, and that's what the name means, are disabled or elderly. So we have to think carefully about that. But can we do a better job with that? Yes, it's like everything else. Uh, I w we do already have things like parents as scholars, things that help people get back to work. Uh, we need to increase that. We need to make sure that main care, which is the health component of the folks who need some help from uh, government occasionally, managed care has to come in there, less reliance on emergency rooms. So we can do things better while we're helping Maine families get back on their feet. Uh, there's no shortage of a work ethic. There's a shortage of work. Is there, a, um, do you support a residency requirement for getting welfare benefits in Maine? It's unconstitutional. Uh, the money comes from the federal government, and under our Commerce Clause, you have the right to travel. So there is no, you can't have a residency requirement. So no, I don't. Uh, I do support helping people get back on their feet and back into the workforce. 
Um, the tax reform measure you endorsed as president of the Senate failed when it came before yes. Maine voters. As governor, would you introduce another tax reform measure, and if so, what would you do differently? We simply cannot continue to have the highest income taxes around. That measure would have reduced income taxes by about 20 percent. Maine voters said, we don't want to pay for it that way, and I understand that. I would never reintroduce that same package. They said no. But we do need to look at how to pay for it. It may have to be more incremental because we're in a very tough recession still so you either have to cut programs or you have to expand the tax but that's going to require the confidence of the main people that comes after the streamlining and after a conversation about what they would like to do we've got to get the income tax rate down one of the main reasons is that our businesses small businesses the backbone of our state file under subchapter s or they're self-employed that would have helped create jobs so yes it's still a problem but we can't go back to the same approach we'll have to look for more incremental reform and perhaps an expansion to ideas that people are much more receptive of. Where is this on your priority list? It's a very high on my priority list because I think it's part of making the economy grow. Um, you've called for cutting Maine's red tape and regulation for businesses. Can you give some examples of what you believe, of red tape you believe needs to go? Well, first let me say I don't want to uh, eliminate regulations that protect clean air and clean water. Maine's brand is a clean and healthy environment, so I'm not talking about that. One of the things I've talked about is uh, if you're asked to comply with a certain regulation, we should be more interested in the outcome than how you get there to make it easier for you to do that. I think businesses are asking for time and they're asking for predictability. So I would certainly want to look at those regulations specifically that are redundant or that simply add nothing to the value of our environment or the businesses. Uh, I've proposed having business advocates within the governor's office who help you understand what those regulations are or to help you with financing if you need something from the Finance Authority of Maine or if you need a water permit from the Bureau of Health and Human Services. So to help people navigate the system, and perhaps I've learned that from my experience in the legislature, constituents call me all the time asking for help. That's what we do. I want to make sure that we have a culture of helpfulness to businesses who need to comply. If we have a another large revenue shortfall in next year's budget cycle, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is being predicted yes. um, it, as, as much as a billion dollars, um, will you again look at broad-based cuts or do you have more targeted cuts in mind? Well, we did actually targeted cuts in the last session. One of the things that I'm very proud of to show that I have a record of getting things done, working with both sides of the aisle, we actually made very serious cuts, but we did it with shared sacrifice. We brought people to the table, health care providers, educators, businesses. What's the least damaging thing to Maine's future? We knew we were in a very deep recession, and we made those cuts as responsibly as we could. We'll be back there again because there's clearly going to be a shortfall. We want to keep growing as best we can, but there clearly will be an effort to make sure we make cuts strategically. All right, Libby Mitchell, thank you so much, and see thank you me. right back here for the debate. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about the candidates or the issues, you can find a lot of information on our special Your Vote 2010 website. Just go to mpbn.net slash your vote.